Today we're lucky enough to have with us one of Beverly Hills' finest cosmetic surgeons, Dr. David Kim. Welcome to the show. How are you? Nice to meet you. You came well recommended, and today we're going to have some of your clients who are very happy and satisfied on the show. But before we even get to that point, every single one of them had the same question in their mind, which was, how did we find you? How yeah. did they find a good qualified surgeon? Well, the simple answer to that is to say, go to someone who's board certified in plastic surgery. That's they're certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. This is the only board that's um, certified by the American Board of Medical Subspecialties as a true plastic surgery board. That'd be the uh, simple answer. There are other people out there that say they are certified by some board. It has to be by which board? The American Board of Plastic Surgery. There's, there's many bogus boards out there right. that uh, American Board of Laser Surgery or the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery. That'd be plastic surgery. Right, and these are, these are doctors that maybe they started out in OBGYN or mm -hmm. pediatrics or whatever, and due to the ever-decreasing reimbursement from insurance companies, they've decided to try to do plastic surgery. So these aren't the doctors that you want to go to. So the simple answer is to say, go to someone who's board certified in plastic surgery, but to really understand why you want to go to someone who's a board certified plastic surgeon, you have to really understand the whole process of becoming a plastic surgeon, which begins during residency training, where we learn all the different subspecialties in plastic surgery, because cosmetic surgery is actually only a very small part of the specialty during our training. We learn microsurgery, trauma, burn. It's this sort of knowledge from all these different subspecialties that will come in and help the plastic surgeon have a more consistent result with less complications. That's when, why you want to go to a board-certified plastic surgeon. Would you kindly of give out your website address, please? My website address is www.beverlyhillsplasticsurgery.com. What common procedures are you performing these days for patients that come through your doors? Well, the most common procedures nationwide are breast augmentation, rhinoplasty, liposuction. So those are my top three procedures. Yeah. It's a real pleasure having you here with Dr. Kim. I want to emphasize to our audience that we're filming this on a Saturday. You took your time to come in here because you're very pleased with the work that you did for you, right? I did. I'm, what I'm type thrilled. Of, what type of work did you do for you? I had rhinoplasty done. So you actually had your nose? Yes. Sculpture, beautiful. Okay. Yes, I love can, it. <laughs> can the camera get a close-up on that one? There we go. <laughs> yeah. um, before you had this done, you had to choose a doctor. There's many to choose, you know, in the, in the yellow pages, whatever. How did you find Dr. Kim? Well, I did a search online, nice. and I found Dr. Kim's name, and I actually found his name and links to his site mm -hmm. on several other sites, and that was, to me was a good thing. He was out there, and then I decided to set up an appointment. Call him in. Board certification was important, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, I did a lot of research on rhinoplasty, which I think is extremely important, yes. um, and I think that's one of the main things that anybody should consider doing before mm -hmm. getting any type of surgery. Right. And you have a, a more realistic expectation and perception of what everything's about. Mm -hmm. And um, I also found that you can do research and background checks on surgeons, and it will tell you if they've had any uh, malpractice suits against them and if they're a legitimately board certified surgeons and right, Dr. Kim important. was and is. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. When you made the decision to do this, how was your life before and how was your life after? My life before was great. I can't complain <laughs> about yes. anything. Um, but afterwards, I would say that it gave me a lot more confidence. Yes. And some people would tell me that I'm silly for saying that. And why did I do it in the first place? Because I didn't need it. Um, but my main concern was photos and taking photos. I was getting married. I got mm -hmm. married in April and I decided to get my surgery in February right before the wedding. And it was for the photos. I was happy with every single photo. That's great. Now, what everybody's looking at whenever they think about having plastic surgery, there's a cost involved. Was yes. it affordable? I would say it's I would say that they make it affordable for you. Do they? Yes. Uh, you can set up a payment plan. I didn't need to do that. It was affordable for me. And I would say that Dr. Kim offers an extremely affordable uh, price to get a um, high-end result. And if you were going to recommend anybody, even a family member, would you recommend going to see Dr. Kim? Absolutely, and I already have. Okay. And my next client, a client of Dr. Kim's, is Natanya Stambouli. Welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you. for coming in here. Thank you. Now, everybody wants to know when a client, a plastic surgeon, comes in here, what did you have done? 
I had breast augmentation surgery. Oh, it looks fabulous. Oh, thank you very much. Now, question is, when you were making a decision to go to, there's lots of doctors out there. Why did you decide on Dr. Kim? Well, actually, I found Dr. Kim probably in 2001 on the internet. I was living in France at the time. That was seven years ago. Yes, uh, at the time. What I was, do you mean you found him? I was doing research on the internet. I typed in breast augmentation surgery, right. and a bunch of things came up. And the first thing that caught my eye were his pictures. If you go to the website, every single picture is, first of all, amazing. Yeah. They are consistent across the board right. in, in their beautiful results. That was the first thing, but I saw Beverly Hills. I was like, I live in Paris, France. I'm not gonna, never gonna end up in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Six years later, completely unrelated chain of events, and here I was, and I was like, this is it. This is the doctor, and also, but You're most stalker, importantly. You? I'm just kidding. No, I am, I secretly, <laughs> I, 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 I wait outside his house every night. Um, no, but the most important thing to me was to have a scarless breast augmentation. Yes. Now, to, in my, to my knowledge, up until now, breast surgery, you had to either cut around the nipple yes. or underneath the breast. Mm -hmm. There's also a transag transaxillary incision, but I wasn't really interested in that. Just thought, freaked so me out. So scarless, what is that? It means that Dr. Kim went through my belly button with a small semicircular incision at the top half of the belly button, mm -hmm. tunneling under the skin and above the muscle to the breast and creating a breast a, a, a pocket for the implant underneath the pectoralis major muscle. Therefore, coming in with instruments and using blunt di a blunt dissection technique to right. lift up that muscle. Therefore, there are no scars, not under my arms, not under, not on my nipples, and that was it for me. And so I started. She describes that better than I do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Are you a doctor? <laughs> no, but I have done years of research. I've wow. done this for a long time, and I really didn't want to, to have to do it again anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Breast augmentation sur surgery is not permanent. You have to do it every. 10, 15 years if the implant lasts that long and if there are no other complications. So I really wanted to be sure. And for me, it was, if I had to have my breast cut open, I would not have done it. Right. This this was it for me. It was the, the tuba, they call it. touched on an interesting thing that she looked at a lot of before and after photos. Because with cosmetic surgery, this is the one specialty in medicine where you can actually see the actual results and see, you know, before and after photos, whereas, you know, with general surgery, all you see is a midline scar. You don't really know right. what happened while this general surgeon was in there. For plastic surgery, you have proof of what, you know, the before and afterwards, uh, after results look like. So right. you can decide based on looking at photos, you know, who you want to go to, who you want to consider for your surgery.